Hello, everyone. So, so far I'm here and the blizzard has not destroyed me or my house, <laughs> but maybe my internet. Yes, yes, maybe our internet will go out. We're just gonna gently place you on the floor. Hi, hi everyone. Look how many people are here. Fantastic. Let's see. I'm going to scroll back up. Augie is here. Steffers is here. Anna's here. Davis is here. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Oh, looks like everybody's doing great. Yes, I posted. Oh, Cassandra's here. Hello. Another book lover is here. Skit is here. Lynette is here. Rob is here. Hello. J. Michael DeAngelis is here. Look at this. HL is here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't spill any water this week. Uh, I didn't step in any pitchers of water. Um, so yeah, yeah, I posted a little bit earlier. Oh, SE is here um, on Twitter and Facebook that due to inclement weather, um, the internet is kind of up in the air tonight. So if I suddenly disappear, it's okay. I'm probably still alive. It's just our internet is not. <laughs> I know I love you, but we're going to place you on the floor. Okay. Um, yeah, we had a couple Zoom meetings earlier today that both just shut down without warning. So Tania's here. Hello, Tania. Hello, hello, hello. <sighs> I'm happy to see you here. I'm happy to see all of you here. Um, oh, Poxy, hey. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Oh, I'm happy to be here. It's been a weird day. Uh, it's been frustrating. It's been... Just ignore me while I put on some lip gloss. Um, <laughs> just just trying to look human. Um, you know, human-ish. Oh, you're back. She's back. Happy fr Oh, it's Friday? Oh, it's Friday, isn't it? Well, Annie says, happy Friday. <laughs> oh, I know. Don't lose Midori in the snow. She's not allowed out. Well, neither of our cats are allowed outside, but they are both very white. Here, look at the look at the camera. Yeah. Look at the camera. No. Oh, we hate, we hate being held. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. You act like, you act like I'm just so cruel to you. <laughs> But yes, uh, yes, thank you. J. Michael D'Angelo says, looking human is overrated. You know what? Let's just look like the wonderful monsters we are. <laughs> oh, uh, Fearless Like a Lion's Heart um, asks, how do you build an audience for yourself? I listened to your last podcast on self-sabotage, and it really spoke to me about how you sabotage yourself. And I was really doubting my writing, and I felt like I wasn't good enough because I write short books. Well, Novellas are awesome right now. Um, I was just reading, I have cat hair on my face. I was just reading, uh, Martha Wells wrote um, The Murderbot Diaries, which are novellas. Um, Stephen Graham Jones has several really, really good novellas out. And I'm sure I'm missing like a ton. Um, but novellas are totally viable. Um, and as for, yeah, as HL says, there is nothing wrong. Whoops. There is not. Let's try that again. There's nothing wrong with short books. Um, yeah, I know. Minori does not sound happy. She's like, she was in here a few minutes ago. Um, I, I had her in here and she was just yowling. She was yowling by her food dish. And she, she acts like I don't feed her. And there's so much food in her dish. You have so much food in your dish. Oh, thank you. I love you too. Um, but yeah, as for building an audience, um, actually, if you go, I was referencing this the other day, I want to say somewhere either on YouTube or in my Twitch history, um, I have my marketing Q and A that went three hours where I talk about building an audience. So I would go back and look at that if you can. Yes, poor, neglected, starving Midori. Yes, it's not the food she wants. Yes, she would prefer it if I had her, um, she only eats one brand of kibble. And so if I had that in my hand and I fed her a piece, oh, see, you're already looking at my, oh, yes, thank you. So anyway, 
oh yeah, yeah. Um, how you, this is how you lose the time war was really good. I actually have that over here on my shelf. <laughs> um, that's a really short one and they're, they're selling very well. Um, people are reading them. I don't know. I've, uh, yeah, I've, I know that short stories can be a little bit harder to sell. Um, but those are also, um, more sellable to like literary journals and genre journals and all sorts of stuff like that. So I feel like this is a really, really huge topic that we can talk about too. Um, Cassandra says, I thought of you all during my previous virtual meetup earlier this evening. All I thought of was stabby unicorn stories while I was looking at a 16th century illumination of a unicorn that looked more like a grumpy donkey <gasps> with a three inch horn. I mean, if there was a stabby unicorn, that would be it. Annie, I hope that you are taking this to heart. The grumpy donkey corn. Somebody write that children's book and I'll go back in time and read it as a child. Oh, surprise. She returns. Um, oh, Pico's here. Hey, Pico. It's great to see you. The cryptid next door is here. Allie is here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, you're currently reading This Is How You Lose the Time War. I'm curious to hear what you think about it. Um, it, it surprised me a lot. Like, it, it was so different than what I thought it would be. Um, but, like, in a really good way. In a really, I, I like to be surprised. And so, for me, it was a really good way. <laughs> yes, the visual of a grumpy donkey with a three inch horn. Oh, donkey corn. Why do I picture, says Davis, a donkey trying to blend in with unicorns with an office water jug? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, donkey unicorn is fantastic. Hey, Alex, it's great to see you. Yes, we might need a link to the grumpy donkey corn. I agree. Oh, a three foot horn. Oh, I, I, I might have read three inch horn, but a three foot horn. That's like, that's like narwhal proportions. I love it. <gasps> Does it really? The latest flash forward. Um, I don't know if any of you listen to Rose Everleth's podcast flash forward, but apparently it has an interview with the two authors who wrote this book. So check it out. Um, Takara says the next part of my publishing journey is the marketing. <gasps> I love that. Takara, do you have any ideas in mind or are you kind of starting from scratch? Um, and do you have any idea what you want your goal to be from the marketing? Um, and like, obviously it's to like sell your work or to get your work in front of an audience, but specifically, what would you like that to look like? Um, is it, I'd like to have a certain number of social media followers by this date. Um, I would like to get two pieces of fan mail by the end of this year. Um, you know, yeah, there's so many different marketing goals you can have, but they should all go back to what makes, what, what makes for a successful writing experience in your mind. So that is really exciting. Carmen is jumping into getting a website. Heck yes. Are you building it yourself? Are you hiring uh, someone to do it for you and like take on all that pain? <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that is fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, Takara, I, I think we talked last week to Takara about your website that you've been frustrated with it and um, you were saving things um, to your phone. And that was really good. Um, oh, Davis says, I'm currently waiting to hear back from the mentorship program I submitted to. The mentors are now listing out the statistics of their submissions, breaking it down by genre. But really cool thing. One of the mentors I submitted to is matchmaking you with a critique partner. Oh, I would love that. I love that. <laughs> Oh, Skit says, I made a website yesterday with card and that's C-A-R-R-D with two R's and it ended up being pretty awesome and it's free. So that's C-A-R-R-D for those of you looking for a free website option. I know a lot of people also use WordPress and Wix. Um, I also like Squarespace, but that is a paid option. I built the Girl in Space website. I think it's like Girl in Space 
podcast.com. Uh, that's built on Squarespace and sarahwerner.com is built on WordPress. And so those are the, those are the two that I use. Yeah. Um, yes. Fearless like a lion heart. Um, episodes 82 and 52 of the right now podcast. If you go back, um, and listen to those, it like walks you step by step, um, through how to start building your audience and how to start marketing. And Takara, you might enjoy those as well. Um, oh, you're just using Wix to start. Perfect. Wix is great. Yep. Oh, good. Okay. Takara says the publishing company is handling all of that. That is a blessing. That is really, 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 really good. <laughs> oh, the fake pin the tail on the donkey with the party hat sticking off his forehead. It's his little horn. Why do I think that's so adorable? I don't know. Yeah, Lynette says finding a critique partner would be great. Steffer says, I'm actually going to be putting together an all-encompassing website for voice acting, writing, and the Space Pirates podcast. It's a huge project, but I really enjoy stuff like that. Good, good. That's, you know, I started off, what did I do? I had my website, and then I made the Girl in Space website separately. And But all of my Right Now podcast episodes live on sarahwerner.com. Um, yeah, and I for for me, I'm kind of glad I did it that way. Um, I like having the brand recognition URL for Girl in Space, but also I link to it from sarahwarner.com. There's a whole lot going on there. Um, I wish you the absolute best of luck in doing that. That is going to be a really big project, but I think it's really going to give you the professional boost um, that you're maybe looking for. I don't want to tell you what you want or what you're looking for. Um, fantastic. Hey, Jimmy's here. Hey, Jimmy. I'm glad to see you. What are you working on today? Um, yeah, Squarespace, there's some growing pains with Squarespace. And I started using it. Here, here's the podcasting connection. I started using Squarespace because um, I heard an ad for it on a podcast on, uh, I think it was the black tapes or Tannis. I think both of them were, um, advertising Squarespace. And so I was just like, okay, I'll experiment with this and see. And then I just like never moved my website away from it. So, and now I'm like a certified Squarespace developer because I've built a lot of websites on Squarespace. Um, but yeah, it is, it's with all those like little teardrop markers, it's like really hard to, it's not very intuitive. I think Wix is more intuitive. Um, I think even WordPress can honestly be a little bit more intuitive. Um, yeah, Ali says I use Wix for building my websites. They sometimes, or they have some outlines that have helped a lot. Yes. Yeah, it looks like a lot of Wix users here. Davis uses Wix. Uh, Fearless Like a Lion's Heart uses Wix. What is the use for a website? I mean, it doesn't really benefit me, but I have it. Oh, so that is, um, your website is just your home on the web. And so a lot of us float around on different websites. Like um, I have a Twitter profile, I have LinkedIn, I have Facebook, I have Instagram, but I don't own any of those. And so if Instagram decides to shut down tomorrow and all of my content lives out on Instagram, I'm screwed. Like I lose my home base, but you are in control of your own website when you have a website. And that is the place. And, and, an author or a creator or a podcaster's website doesn't have to be huge. I've seen some really fantastic one page websites that are just like, Hey, uh, I'm Sarah. I'm a creator. And here's links to all of my stuff. You can download my podcast. You can follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and it just serves as a home base that you own. So, um, yeah. So I, I hope that that's, I try to make that like a really succinct, um, explanation. Um, it's also a, a website also serves as a trust signal. So if you can say like, Hey, you know, you can reach me, um, at sarahwerner.com. It's like, Oh, that sounds professional. You know, Oh, instead of, Hey, I'm a professional writer. You can just find me on Twitter somewhere. It's a little less professional. There's also, um, often if you have a, and again, this is depending on how professional you want or care to look. Okay. So I'm not saying you have to be professional. You have to have a headshot, like all of that stuff. That's completely up to you. And whether 
a certain degree of professionalism will benefit you as a creator. So like I do national speaking. And so for me, it benefits me to say, oh, yes, you can reach me at hello at Sarah It's like, oh, that sounds legit. I'm not like Sarah one, two, three at yahoo.com. So that sounds a little bit less professional. So there's like that professional aspect. But honestly, I, I generally I generally advise I don't know what this piece of hair is doing. I generally advise that people have their own website, you know, because of the professionalism and trust signal thing, but also because you own it. And if you post your content there, um, it won't it won't go away until you take the website down. So um, that's just my that's just my two cents. Um, you know, there's we could also get into like. So like if I own sarahwarner.com, that means that nobody else can own sarahwarner.com. So like even if I weren't, even if I wasn't going to like use the website, I would still own that URL and I could like redirect it to my Twitter or I could redirect it somewhere. Um, again, just for branding purposes, it would be like um, you can even just camp the domain. I mean, I don't recommend doing that because it's it's not fantastic. Um, you know, the other thing, you know, hey, as long as we're getting into talking about websites, a website is the best thing you can do for SEO. And I've talked about SEO during these live streams before. It stands for search engine optimization. And it's one of the best things you can do for marketing. So basically, if you're optimized for search engine optimization, it means when somebody types in like really cool science fiction podcasts into Google, yours has a better chance of coming up. And so if somebody Googles Sarah Werner, I have a very common name. Like my name is like Joe Smith or John Smith, like in Germany, like everybody is named Sarah Werner. Literally everyone in Germany is named Sarah Werner. <laughs> you heard it here first. Um, but I own sarahwerner.com. There's a, a there's another very well-known academic named Sarah Werner who had to like name her website something else. So when people type in Sarah Werner into Google, I come up before this other very well-known Sarah Werner. And actually, uh, she and I are Twitter friends and it's very cool, but okay. Does all that sound good? Does all that make sense? Um, Anne says, I built my free blog with WordPress and a few, few years later I up to, upgraded to their premium plan. I also use premium WordPress. Um, I do self-hosted and I do, let's see. I host with Bluehost, which I'm not super happy with. I They've been not great. Um, you know, I first started hosting with them in like 2013 or 2014. And, you know, companies change over a million years. <laughs> Jimmy says, I'm not saying I just woke up from an unscheduled nap, but I'm not not saying it either. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. So I was talking a lot. Oh, Tim is here. Hey, Tim. Tim says, sorry, I fell asleep. Like you and Jimmy, I think both. It's been, it's been a week. Um, it's been, I feel like for you, a rough week. Um, so I, I'm glad that you got some sleep. I hope that it was peaceful and good. Um, let's see. So I feel like I missed a lot of things while I was talking on and on and on about marketing and, and websites and such. Let's see. Yeah, Anne says, I can't stand WordPress's block editor. It's not that accessible. It is not, it is not great. Actually, I have a plugin that I use instead of their native block um, editor. I use Divi, which also costs money. It's like, uh, I don't know. We won't get into that right now. <laughs> yeah, usability um, with website design and building ha is historically not great. I mean, you know, user interface on the front end isn't great either. <laughs> it's not always accessible, but the back end is especially heinous. Let's see. Oh yeah. Um, so if you want to check the I am a writer Facebook group, Jimmy has started putting um, weekly prompts in there. And so if you ever come to one of these sessions and you are just like at a complete loss for what to write, check out the prompt. It's over there. It's a uh, um, Sarah Werner. No, it's not sarahwerner.com. <laughs> it's facebook.com slash groups slash proud writers. And yeah, that's, 
that's where it is. Or you can just search for I am a writer and it'll come up. You can join the group. It's free. I know. <laughs> Alex says you heard an ad for Squarespace on a podcast. Wow. It's on like literally every podcast. Mm. Augie says I had a gross mental health day today. So I'm happy it's Friday and I can get lost in this audio drama script again. I'm glad it's finally coming together. Augie, me too. Me too. Absolutely. Ooh, Takara says my first poetry book, Roar, will officially be coming in May. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Congrats. Allie says I still need to make a website that's just for me. Yeah, you know, at some point. Yeah, people are saying congrats, Takara. I love it. Um, let us know where we're able to get it. Um, Jimmy used the word samesies, which is my new favorite thing. Um, yeah, lots of people have had naps today. Um, I actually was thinking about taking a nap briefly before the live stream and ended up not. Kind of glad I didn't so that I'm not just like half dead, like my internet might soon be. Yes, quick reminder for those of you who are just joining, our internet today has been terrible. There's high winds, there's blizzards going on out there. Um, so if if I disappear, um, I apologize in advance and I encourage you to continue writing. Go on without me. Okay. If I disappear, continue writing, creating, podcasting, whatever it is, quilting that you are doing without me. Okay. All right. Be strong. Um, okay. Alex says, I want to plug the incredible chai I'm having right now. It's the best I've ever had. So that looks like that is bunkatea.com if you want to go there. They should give us money for like. <laughs> Doing a little a little shout out there. A little shout out. Um, mm, yeah. Fearless Like a Lion's Heart says the blog on Wix isn't really great, so I don't have a blog on my website. I think that's okay. I mean, if you want a blog, you can always, um, you know, build a Well, see, I want to give you I want to give you a good solution. And I don't want to say like, oh, you can always just build a Tumblr or whatever, because you don't own Tumblr. Like you can write your posts on your blog and then post them over to Tumblr uh, with a no rel sort of like link tag. But like I, I almost was going to tell you to like, oh, build a second website that has a blog that works. But if you're not like too keen on blogging, I wouldn't worry about it. Ooh, HL, do an official headshot. All right. I, I think that, you know, at some point, um, if you are able to get a headshot um, or if there is somebody in your life who can take a decent picture, um, it, it, it makes you look really professional. Like I have a, like if you go out to my Twitter or my Facebook, like I have headshots and I'm like, ooh, that's me. And I look professional and fancy. And then you see me in real life and I'm like wearing a hoodie and sweatpants and, <laughs> and no makeup. <laughs> Augie says, I loved what you had to say about using a landing page instead of a site like Linktree. Yes. This is like, I don't remember where I talked about this, if it was in a Right Now podcast episode um, or if it was in this group. I say things and then I don't remember where or when I say them. Um, but those of you using Linktree, you can actually build your own Linktree. Um, if you go out to sarahwarner.com, I think slash Linktree, or better yet, if you find me on Instagram at Sarah Ray Warner, the spelling of that is right here, um, and you click on the link in my bio, it'll take you to the Linktree that I built. And so you can just create a page on your website that has links to everything you want. And then when people click your link, they're not clicking to linktree.com, which Linktree owns, they're clicking to sarahwarner.com, and then they have a greater chance of staying on your website and consuming your content and becoming a loyal audience member. So, fun. Thank you for reminding me of that, Augie. Um, yeah, Ann says uh, the audio is going in and out. Mm, my internet. My internet. Ooh, Davis says, my favorite SEO story. You used to be able to look up my name and find Walden Davis, and now it's the other way around. Yes. <laughs> that is, 
Yes, that is an SEO win. SEO win. All right, let's see. Oh, Skit, drive safe. Oh, I am so behind my wonderful, beautiful friends. Um, I'm a little behind. I'm a little behind. Okay. Oh, yes. I want to highlight this. Uh, my partner's him, uh, who is in the other room right now, says, friends, I want you all to know, and not just the Stardew folks, because I was streaming Stardew Valley yesterday, and Tim made this announcement there. But for those of you who are not uh, one of the, like, nine people watching me stream Stardew Valley yesterday, uh, Tim finished an entire completed episode of Omen. And Tim says, thank you all for your support and encouragement. I can't wait to share this show with everyone this year. Yes. I, it's so good. I listen to it and it's, it's really good. It's really good. Dimitri says, I had a weird day. First day of semester teaching while my cat had gone missing. Oh no. Searching and calling all day. And finally he shows up completely indifferent. I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, cats. Oh, cats. Yes. Yay, Tim. That is amazing. That is awesome. And Tim says, thank you, friends. You're all part of this crazy creative journey I've been on. Yes. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Oh, the audio. Oh, very cool. So your audio book was released in November for your poetry book. Awesome. I love it. Augie says, Sarah, have you ever considered putting together a discord for these create along groups? I have not. I have, I'm notoriously terrible at Discord. I have a girl in space Discord, which I think you're maybe a member of, and maybe some other of you as well. But, and I also have a, um, a right now Discord, which used to be patron only for Patre Patreon patrons of the right now podcast. I don't know if it still is. I'm the worst. I'm literally the worst at Discord. Um, but yeah, that might be a really fun place to also have um, a forum, especially because I know there are several of you um, who aren't on Facebook. And then it's just so like everybody is on different platforms. And that's the other you know upside of having your own website, because if somebody's not on Facebook, they can still go to your website. Or if they're not on Instagram, they could still go to your website. I'm just very pro website. Steffers says, I started a new job this week, so my brain is pretty fried. I'm ready to disconnect from the IT side of online marketing and work on some space pirate fun. I love it. Space pirates. <gasps> the first episode of your tea podcast, Alex, is coming out. It's called Where There Is Tea, There Is Hope, and it's coming February 1st at t-cast.com. Look at that. I love it. Yeah, bloggers a good place to start with blogging or um I like, well, I like Tumblr, but Tumblr is weird. Um, but yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. I have like an outfit for, so I've met, I've met Davis a couple times, I think, in real life. And usually I'm in like my con attire, which is like a suit coat, yep, t-shirt, jeans, and like whatever shoes, you know, that are like fun slip-ons. Um, yeah, no, I'm totally wearing just like, this is like a free giveaway t-shirt and I've got like this old green hoodie. It's classy, very classy. Uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, um, what is everybody working on tonight? And, oh, yes, okay. Tania says, Okay, sorry, I'm like trying to like re speed read um, all the comments. So Tania says, tonight I'm torn about my project, in quotes. I'm clearing out the room that was my office a year ago, but then became my husband's office back in March, but will become my mom's room this weekend once we move her in. Oh my gosh, there is a lot going on there. Um, oh, uh, Lynette says, last week I volunteered to take a look at someone's idea and give them my opinion about it for what it's worth. And I don't remember who it was. So if you're here, please let me know. Who was that? Um, oh, good. Steffer says, I believe that was me. Oh, okay, good. Okay. 
So that's all taken care of. Tania says, way to go, Tim. Um, yes, I do have a girl in space discord, but should I just invite you all to my right now discord as well? Should we just do that? Oh, thank you. Allie has the girl in space discord link here. So thank you. Let's see. Uh, tonight, Davis is working on episode eight of the Viridian Wild. Beautiful. Uh, Steffers says, uh, the, tonight's goal isn't, so Steffers has been doing this 750 words a day, which is amazing. So tonight's goal is another 750 words pertaining to space pirates. Not entirely sure what I'll be writing, but I think I'm going to add more details to my season one plot. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Another book lover says, finishing up dinner, then working on vigilantes. I love it. Alex is getting back to that time travel story. Oh, you haven't touched it since early December. That's okay. The holidays were long. 2021 has been very long as well. Looking forward to getting lost in it again. Allie is working on pen pal letters. Okay, that's delightful. Augie is writing episode three of your show. I love it. Uh, why blog? Yes, it gives people a sample of your writing before your book comes out. Blogging is also a great form of um, content marketing. And it, it serves a very similar purpose to a podcast, actually. Um, it is, and, and depending what you blog about, it can be not only um, content marketing, but it can also be authority marketing. If you want to know more about this, I actually have a Right Now podcast episode that came out recently. Let me find that for you. That is not the right document. Let me find that for you. Okay. I'm getting my little spreadsheet up of all of my uh, Right Now podcast episodes. And let's see. Um, oh, my gosh. Okay. Okay. Uh, J. Michael DeAngelis, working on a huge project with multiple collaborators. Everyone has done their bits, and now I've been tasked with Frankensteining it together this weekend. So that starts tonight. Okay. <laughs> good luck. Oh, absolutely good luck. Oh, I could. I could make a channel just for create alongs under the Right Now Discord. Oh, okay. 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 Let's. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this happen and put the link here into Twitch. And. I will do that when we start our writing time, okay? So you'll see a link from me come up here, and that'll be when we start our, our writing slash creating time. <gasps> Cassandra's playing Stardew Valley tonight. She says, I've been going nonstop all day, and I just need to not think too hard, or I might start brainstorming a story from my grumpy donkey corn. I love you, grumpy donkey corn. Tim says, I'm working on some crazy audio design tonight where the main characters have a hushed conversation in the balcony of a large theater while an impassioned political speech is happening in the background. I'm cursing my past self for writing such complicated audio cues in my scenes. I have been there. And I think many of us have been there. Carmen says, I'm going to get my website bio up and then start on the short story. I love it. Love it. Love it. Oh, and uh, Davis, Cassandra says, I've been listening to your podcast. I've been really enjoying it. Great job. Yes. Um, let's see. Anne says, starting chapter seven of my novel. I love it. Part 21, Takara. Part 21 of my murder mystery is almost done. I love it. And you've got your poetry book coming out. That is fantastic. Love it. I love it. Um, let's see. Ali says this week we wrapped on recording season two of Dining in the Void and I'm having feelings. I am currently outlining season three and I'm nervous. It, oh my gosh. I'm nervous. It won't live up to season two. Trying to remind myself that I make the show for myself. And if I'm happy with that, it'll be enough. Ali, Ali, Ali. This has been me working on season two of Girl in Space. I'm going to put your comment back up, like, currently outlining it. I'm nervous it won't live up to season two. I am so, like, blindly, madly terrified that season two of Girl in Space will be a huge disappointment to everybody. And I'm like, 
I go back and forth between here's what I want the story to be and here's what I think other people want the story to be. And they're not always in the same place. And so I'm going to spill my coffee, so I'm going to stop doing that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 So please, please know that I'm here with you. I am also actually um, tonight during our session, I'm working on season two of Girl in Space. I have been um, trying to write. My goal is two pages every day, and I got one and a half done this morning because, like I've said earlier, um, I just completely lost my train of thought because I was looking at the chat. And Allie says, I appreciate you looking into the camera while saying all of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Yes. Jimmy, uh, Sarah says, love that prompt, Jimmy. Um, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to set up our, our little Discord thing and invite you all to it. Um, but also, working on girl in space. Okay. I have no idea where my brain was going. Let's get to creating. So whether you are here tonight to do some writing, whether you are here tonight to do some audio design or you're quilting or you're making cookies, like whatever it is, okay? Whatever it is you wanna work on tonight, you are welcome to do that with us. We are going to be creating for about the next, It's it always ends up being 50 minutes. I say an hour. I always end up talking extra. Um, but as you can see in our little banner here, we're gonna be writing until 8.30 p.m. Central. That is 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 p.m. Mountain, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. There's math. Um, so yeah, um, I will mute myself during this time. I will also uh, send you a link real quick in the comments for the Discord. Otherwise, um, Yeah, my man. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Oh, this is this is not a good sign, is it? If my mind just keeps going completely blank. Yep. We'll write together until the Alpenhorn of Summoning sounds. Oh, that's right. The other thing I wanted to say is, if you are not in a good place tonight, if you are not in a place of creativity, if you are overwhelmed, if you are exhausted, if you want to stare at the wall, if you want to stare out the window at the blizzard outside, if you want to call your mother or call a friend. Um, if you want to doodle, if you want to just play video games while we create, you are always welcome here in this community. You do not have to be creating anything to be here. Um, yeah, you just maybe sometimes need to refuel yourself. Okay. Oh, thank you. Augie says, I believe in you. And if you can't today, that's okay too. Thank you. Tim says, to the tune of walking on broken glass, I just keep working working on girl in space. Do, 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 do. Yes. I love it. Love it. Okay. And with that, and with that, should we go ahead and, yep, now it's in my head too. Should we go ahead and start, my friends? Should we go ahead and start? Jimmy says, I feel jumbled tonight. I'd like to write, but I think it might be a better idea to just brainstorm. I can sift through for interesting story nugs. Perfect. Jimmy, that's writing. That counts as writing. Brainstorming is writing. It's all writing. It's all creating. It's all part of the process. So brainstorming sounds amazing. All right. As Augie says, let's do this. I'm going to mute myself and I will see you in 50 minutes.
Welcome back, writers. <laughs> oh, man. So I don't think... All right, just one second. Okay. I, I, don't, I, I don't think that my internet died, but then I went to play our Alpenhorn sound, and it just, like, would not load. So... Fantastic. Augie says, I was in the zone. I love it. Pico Machine, yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I hope everyone's writing or whatever they did went well. Good night. Enjoy your weekend. Um, yeah. I saw some other people had to, had to jet, and that is absolutely fine. Um, Yes, podcast Tim is here. Hello, was being interviewed about your backstory and how you got into podcasting. Um, good, that's amazing. It looks like uh, Sarah Crash. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> Allie says, I finished one of my letters. Davis says, I couldn't push through editing annoyingly enough. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's just not there. J. Michael D'Angelo says, didn't do what I set out to do, but I did a lot on something else. So that's a win. I love it. Good. Good. Ooh, Lynette says, I got more questions written for book two than I got answered. I understand. Yes. But also, maybe good? I don't know. I always think that if, like, if you're asking questions, like, you're on the right track, you're discovering, you're in the midst of... You're in the midst of being creative. Midori thinks I never pet her. Isn't that right? Oh. Um, Tim says, also in the zone. I love it. Got my background speech levels nicely backgroundified. Good. Good. <gasps> Jimmy says, I wrote the best opening line for a story I have ever written, in all caps. And I don't know what to do with it yet. Mmm. Sit on it. Yeah. Oh, Tim says share. <laughs> Let's see. Cassandra says, I did a little donkey brainstorming and then harvested some parsnips. You know, in any other, in any other channel, this would make zero sense. But you know what? In this channel, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> so that makes me really happy. <laughs> Oh, good. Dimitri says, thank you. Great weekend, everyone. Yes. Yes. If you have to head out, that's 100% fine. Just go when you need to go. You can always like join us when you need to join us. There's no being late. It's this is this is time that you're setting aside for yourself to do what you need to do with it. So <gasps> Carmen says my website is live. It just has my bio. Really very few words were written, though. That's OK. It doesn't need to be a novel like your, your website does not need to be its own like literary work. It can just be like a picture of you and like, hey, I'm a writer and I live in Montana or whatever. Um, here's a link to where I'm most active on social media. That's it. Like, it can be a work in progress. That's absolutely fine. Yes, it's progress. Yes, yes. Sarah says, I'm trying to figure out coding, which is kind of writing. Absolutely. It's creativity. Coding takes a lot of creativity. <laughs> Alex says, I got 1,064 words done. Man, that felt great. Alex, how did you do that? I saw you like chatting over on my uh, over on the Discord and you still got 1,000 words written? Wow. Tell me your magical ways because, I mean, okay, I guess I got maybe one or 200 words, but like, so slow. So slow. Let's see. Another book lover says, I got through a call between my main character and his family that I've been stalled on since Wednesday. Oh my gosh. Good. I love breakthroughs like that. Yes. Good. Augie says, whew, 816 words down tonight, even with Twitter and Discord distractions. You guys are amazing. And he says, a little bit of progress tonight. I ended up wordsmithing the scene I already have, so the emotional dynamic flows better. And I got all of two sentences in scene two. That's writing. That's writing. I mean, that's what it is. That's what it is sometimes. Good. Annie, I'm proud of you. That's wonderful. 
Tania says, I got the whole room emptied and half of the closet will be more than ready for mom this weekend. Good. Feels good to get that work done. That is fascinating. Good. Pinball Princess says, I tried to write something reflecting my fear of failure and how I've tried to overcome that if I walk, if I want to walk the writer's path. Tried to make it an extended D&D metaphor. Just kind of want to cry now because dealing with failure is one of those capital T things for me. Might be making myself a drink. Yes. Was this a um, like a journal entry or was it, uh, were you processing through a fictional piece or a poem? Um, yeah, processing that can be so hard, especially if it's like you said, one of those capital T things for you that maybe triggers something or brings back a lot. So boy, I'm sending you love and warmth as you deal with that. It can be a lot. Davis is playing Stardew Valley. Ooh, just got your copper ax and you're having a chicken coop built. Oh, I remember those days. Love it. Love it. Yeah, Tim says, Pinball Princess, don't be afraid to feel your feelings and process them. This sounds like a big breakthrough for you. It really does. It really does. And breakthroughs are hard, but they're so, so worth it. Takara says, I'm almost finished. Just have a little bit more to go. Awesome. Alexander says, the chatting fueled my writing. Good, 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 good. Ellie says, how far into season two of Girl in Space are you, Sarah? I am on episode four. So those of you, sometimes I've, I've updated some of you in different times and places. And I think most of this has gone into my Patreon for Girl in Space. But um, there was a lot of starting over in 2020. Um, there was a lot of wrong tracks and I only started doing an outline in, I think August or so. And then the outline really helped. And then I had to redo the outline a couple times. And so anyway, it's sticking this time and that feels good. So I'm on episode four and I don't know hundred percent how many episodes they're going to be. I'm thinking between 10 and 12. Um, I'm aiming toward 10 with the knowledge that I always go overboard. So thank you for asking that. HL says, I have half a page of chicken scratch on Jimmy's prompt, but better than a blank page, I guess. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Kathy says, got some work done one-handed on the keyboard, holding a sleeping puppy. Ah, truly living your best life right now. Oh, Rob said, question, who was doing coding? I am just starting my coding journey. Um, that was... Coding, coding, coding. I think it was Sarah Brandle. Yes, it was Sarah. Yes. Okay, so this is Jimmy's best first sentence ever. Are you ready? Time travel is quite impossible, you know, said the velociraptor to the man in the white lab coat as it stepped from a gaping hole in the empty air and adjusted its flak vest. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, that's gold. That is gold. That's gold. Maybe that's the whole story. Like maybe it's just like a one sentence micro story. I don't know. It's delightful. Yes, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Tim, you bought Stardew Valley. Yes, blame you can blame me. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tim also says, I'd intended to do the artwork for our Monday release on funny science fiction, but I won't be able to do it until tomorrow. I almost forgot I was getting interviewed. LOL. I have spaced an interview or two in my time. So, yep. <laughs> yep. Pinball Princess says, I was trying to make it like a blog entry and it turned into, wait, I don't know anything about this and turned journaly. Oh, interesting. So you were trying to maybe approach it from like a teaching standpoint and then realize like I need to back up. That doesn't mean that you don't like really know anything about it, though. Um, your experiences are so valid. They're so valid. And they're so worthwhile. I hope that you find a way to write about that or process it um, 
in a way that is good and leads you to a healthy place. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Jimmy says, I've been there, often there. You've got this for real. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, Tania says, I feel you, my friend. I'm dealing with slot lately too. Yeah, I wish you could, I wish I could send you a magic wand to make it all better, but that drink may do the trick too. Raising a glass to you. Absolutely. Davis says, I'm wondering, how do you feel about the creativity productivity divide when it comes to making content? Um, it's not an either or, I don't think. You know, you're not either creative or productive. Um, I guess unless I'm like just like grossly misunderstanding what you're asking. Um, you know, I, 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 think the, I think the art needs to be what it needs to be. And if you're not feeling productive, then there's a reason you're not feeling productive. Usually, like you're tired, you're burned out. Um, or if you're feeling resistance, there's a reason behind that too. So I, I always like to dig into the reason that I'm not feeling productive with my creative project. Um, I would definitely recommend reading um, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. It is all about resistance. Um, and my partner, Tim, and I often say, like, I'm feeling a lot of resistance today. And I think even just acknowledging it, acknowledging whether you're feeling resistance or whether you are actually done and burned out and your brain is legit fried, understanding which one of those it is, um, that will tell you what to do. That'll tell you, oh, I need to go rest. I need to play Stardew Valley for an hour, or I need to go on a walk and I need to let my brain recharge, or I'm just being difficult and getting in my own way and self-sabotaging and I need to like work through that. So I, I think that understanding if you have the time and the I guess the wherewithal, I, I, I like to use my journal for that, honestly. That's a lot of what my journal is, is like preparing myself for the day's writing session. And I'll just write out like, you know, like this morning, this morning, um, I wrote focus, focus, focus. Those are the first three words I wrote in my journal this morning in my entry. And then I, I continue, I'm frustrated because I'm so easily distracted. And to some degree, I invite this distraction. And like, I kind of went on like talking about my own resistance and working through it. And then after that, I wrote a page and a half of Girl in Space. And it was like actually good and it felt good to write. Um, so that's my really long winded response to your question, Davis. And I hope that I answered it in the right way. Thimble Princess says, thank you. Yeah, I realize, I think realizing that I want to move out of the starter town on, on my adventure is big. It's scary as heck but I want to live a more creative life no matter what. Good, good. Knowing what you want, I think, is one of the hardest things. So that's amazing. Rob asks, question, is there a place where I can showcase writing samples, like a website where writers can build portfolios or something like that? Um, I just, I recommend having your own website and maybe showcasing your work in your blog. Um, but if you're looking for maybe like a more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Communal place. Um, I don't know. Does anyone in chat know of anything like that? Oh, gosh. I've missed a lot of comments. I'm so, I'm like scrolling through these now. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna go through some of these just real quick here. And I, I apologize. I apologize for getting behind. Uh, Ali says there's nothing wrong with starting over. Season two of Dining in the Void was written twice before because after I finished, I hated everything but the last episode. So I sat down with a friend and we redid the outline and now we have the season two you hear today. Yes. Sometimes starting over lets you make something better than you could imagine at first. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes I need to go down the wrong path so that I know it's the wrong path. 
and it takes time and it's frustrating and it feels like a waste, but you still need to do it. You still need to do it. I totally get that. Good. Pinball princesses, thank you everyone. Knowing that I'm not alone has really helped. Good. Good. <laughs> Yes, I like this. Uh, Tim says, Pinball Princess, moving out of my starter town is such a beautiful metaphor. I hope that you find some awesome runes to explore both in-game and in real life. I like that. All right, Alex is going to dinner. See you on the Discord. Yes, thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for becoming a patron. Well, or upping your patronage of right now. Um, Takara says, can you give me a quick rundown about marketing? Yes, I'll make it quick. I'll make it like one minute. So marketing is building a bridge between you and your audience because you're over here, you know, you're writing your book, you're writing your poetry and your audience is over here and they don't know what you're doing. Like they don't know that you're writing your book or your poetry or anything like that. So marketing is basically building a bridge, um, that says, Hey, I exist. And Hey, we want your work. And you just like build that bridge. And that bridge is made of communication. Communication is the biggest part of marketing. And the way in which you communicate is going to be your tone. It's going to be your campaigns. It's going to be your strategies. Um, so that's like my quick, quick overview about marketing is that marketing is a bridge between your work and your audience. So your first step in creating a marketing plan is going to be understanding the valuable points about your work. And we call that a UVP, a unique value proposition. So what is it about your work that makes it special and unique and good and makes people want it? And then who is your audience? That's the other question is, who is this for? Because your work isn't for everybody. Like not everybody likes poetry. Not everybody likes classic literature. Not everybody likes sushi. Like not everybody likes everything. And so understanding who is going to like your work, who is that audience, that's going to be your second step. And then once you've identified both of these things, you can start building that bridge. So that's my quick uh, one minute. It might've been like a minute and 30 seconds. That's my quick one minute overview on marketing. I hope that makes sense. Yes. And I also have a, a, like a three hour, <laughs> I had a three hour live stream about marketing over on Twitch and it might be on my YouTube channel now. Um, and you can just find me over at Sarah Ray Warner. And if it's not there, I'm going to try to find where it might be. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if, yes, if you want to go back and listen to right now, um, I do have several episodes, episodes 86, 87, 85, 87, 80, I don't know, somewhere in the 80s, I have a whole bunch of marketing specific podcasts episodes, and they're for creators of all kinds. So they're for writers, they're for podcasters, they're for uh, just anybody who wants to learn about marketing. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy says, Sarah has two speeds when talking about marketing. You're either going to get 90 seconds or three hours. Yeah. Yep. There's no in between. I can't just casually talk about marketing. I will either tell you in a nutshell that it's a bridge or I'm going to go on for like three hours. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. And Tim, sorry. I'm like scrolling back in the chat. Um, Tim listed, it's 84, 85, and 87. If you go back, um, if you go back and listen to those episodes and yes, um, oh gosh. Okay. Um, yeah. Rob says, what is this girl in space you speak of? So it's a fictional podcast and it is 12 episodes and that's season one and it's available everywhere. Um, it's a sci-fi show about a girl in space and I have that. And then I have the right now podcast. That's W R I T E the right now podcast. And that's where I just talk about creative stuff. Um, I have a lot of episodes about writing. I've got episodes about, uh, self-sabotage. I've got, uh, being a creator and a business owner. Um, 
I just talk about whatever's <laughs> whatever's on, on my mind uh, as it relates to writing. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope, I hope, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Yes. And I'm going to put these up here again. So it's all at, it's all at SarahWarner.com. Or if you want to look for these episodes in your favorite podcast podcatcher, um, that'll be uh, some non three hour long uh, looks at marketing. So yes, yes, yes. Chat room. Sarah, you can't give a quick rundown about marketing. Sarah, hold my mason jar of water. That is totally not moonshine. It's not. It's water. Look, it's got a straw. Davis, if you're here, take a sip. I want you to hydrate. Oh, Tim says, I can't find your marketing rant on YouTube. You should upload it this weekend. Oh, I hope I have it somewhere. I hope I have it somewhere. Ali says marketing is scary. No, no, no. Marketing is friend. Marketing is friend shaped. Marketing is friend. Go back and listen to those right now episodes. Marketing is friend. <laughs> oh, it's my pal two hour mark. I'm here to ruin your vibes and remind you that your energy is finite. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Ooh, okay, this is legit. Allie says, I struggle with finding all the spoons to market all of my shows. If you're not familiar with spoon, is it spoon theory? Is that what it's called? Um, it's it's basically having the capacity to do or handle or deal with something. And I totally understand that. For me, it's sending out mail. I am, I never have the spoons to send out mail. And if so if I, if I owe you a letter or a t-shirt or a thank you card, I have it in a pile and I just cannot send them out. So anyway, okay, sorry. Um, but yeah, struggling with finding all the spoons to market your shows. There's ways to break down marketing so that it's not unmanageable. And, and that just comes down to, we should do, oh, we should do a right, oh, I'm having an idea. We should do like a marketing workshop where you like, come with something that you want to market and we end up with like some kind of like comprehensive marketing plan, but it's like actually manageable. It's not like, Oh, you have to put, you know, post 90 times a day on Instagram. Like nobody, no. Mm -mm. And so Allie, I would want you to maybe think about like, like what is it about marketing that is so like, what's the big block for you? And it, it might be different for everyone. Yes, your author page is marketing. Yes, Takara. Yes, your author page is marketing. It is that communication bridge between you and your audience. Yes, that is a piece of your marketing. Yes, 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 yes. Shoot, you know what? It might, if you can't find my marketing rant on Twitch, I think Twitch deletes videos that are over 15 days old, but I think I saved it somewhere. I don't know. I hope I saved it somewhere. Okay. Yes, go get it. Go get a glass of water, Davis. Do it. <laughs> Jimmy's marketing plan: beg random strangers to read his stories and buy his book that is coming out later this month. Hint, hint. <laughs> Jimmy, you have a newsletter. Uh, a newsletter is a type of permission marketing, and that is some of the best marketing you can get. They always say the money is in the list. So if you have a book to sell. Um, that's going to be your email list. That's going to be gold for you. <laughs> HL says marketing equals people. Ew. <laughs> Unfortunately, people are the people who are going to be reading and buying your work. I know, but people, I know. We're, I feel like a lot of us are, I feel like a lot of us are introverts. <laughs> and I totally, totally get that. I totally, totally get that. All right, we're getting a lot of like yes pleases for a marketing workshop. Um, yeah, I don't know what that'll look like, but somebody remind me about it and we'll like make that happen. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steffers. My gosh, Steffers says, can I just take a moment to appreciate you? You get on these live streams and provide such valuable information. You're just such a wonderful, generous person. I appreciate it. Thank you. Steffers, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. 
HL says, I've had to set very tiny marketing goals. First, I created a Facebook account. Then I posted one thing on it daily for about a month. Then I posted the same thing daily on Instagram for a month. Ditto Twitter. Yes. And I even, I even advise people to just pick one, like pick one. You don't have to have like Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Twitch and, and WhatsApp and Snapchat and all the things like you can just, you can just pick one, like bare bones. And that's, I think that that's where we would start. Okay. Sorry. I'm like already planning this like marketing seminar. <laughs> Mm. Jimmy says, do you know I've asked for absolutely nothing in my newsletter for myself in 10 episodes? Why is that, Jimmy? Why is that? Why is that? Ellie says, I feel like no matter how hard I try, I can't grow my audience as much as I want. I see all these new shows getting 20,000 downloads when I think we only maybe have two or 3,000, which is awesome, but I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. Oh, that's very, yes. Ellie, that is extremely, extremely frustrating. And it's frustrating because you know, other shows are doing it and you, it's frustrating because you know that your listeners are out there and there are 20,000, 30,000 people who would enjoy your work. Like, and it's frustrating when you're here, your work is here and there's not a bridge that's connecting, um, connecting you to your audience. No, I totally understand that. And also, I know it's hard to see other shows just immediately getting 20,000, 30,000 listens, like immediately. Um, I know. But a few caveats is, number one, comparing yourself to them is just going to make you sad. I've... I. I remember feeling a flare up of that. I saw, um, gosh, the new, um, I probably shouldn't even admit this, but like when I saw the Kickstarter for unseen, just like immediately got, I don't know, thousands and thousands, like 50 or 70 or $80,000 during its Kickstarter and like met it right away. I felt a little envious and I was like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, they like their show, you know, better than, better than mine. Like I, comparison hurts. It hurts us. And I know sometimes we can't help but see those numbers because people celebrate them on Twitter and Facebook and like, yay to them for celebrating. Um, but it kind of does invite comparison. Um, and that that's hard to deal with. Um, so that I, I want to say that. And then I want to also say, um, I don't know how to say this, but it's, not everybody is always 100% truthful when they celebrate things. And I feel gross saying that, but I also know that a lot of people inflate their numbers. And so I don't know. I would just say um, you might be comparing yourself also to something that someone else is making up. Uh, for clout or for their own ego or because they misunderstand their own statistics. And so I, I, I want to say that too. So I hope that that is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Rob says, I struggle with comparing myself to others. It's a real problem for me. Hey, um, I do have a right now episode about that as well. <laughs> Um, it is, I was telling somebody else about it today. I think it's episode 88. Yes. 88, the dangers of comparison. And, um, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. What I'm saying helps a lot. Good. I hope so. It's, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Everybody says different things and everybody has metrics that matter and don't matter. And yeah, this is Allie. This is it. Allie says, I have to keep reminding myself that I make dining in the void for me and being okay with where we are currently. Everyone, essentially everyone is running their own race and you never know what is going on behind the scenes of another show or another author's book or anything like that. 
Um, and, and, you know, they may, you know, maybe one of the creators is in a band and the band is very popular and they just, you know, their audience built up from their band. Um, and, you know, 20 years ago, they had to start their band from scratch and they were complaining that they didn't have any listeners. And I don't know. So all, all of that to say, all of that is to say that you just got to focus on making something you love and you have to remember why you're doing it. You have to remember why you're creating. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Ugh. Let's see. Oh man. Oh man. A lot of people are saying really smart, good things. Yes. Marissa says, missed you all tonight. Oh, we missed you too, Marissa. I'm happy that you were able to pop in and say hi. Yes. This is another thing is like, again, you never know if somebody has a marketing budget, um, if they're writing the coattails of something, if they're in a network, if they have access to resources, maybe you don't have access to. There's just so many factors. It does not mean they have a better show. The shows with the most listeners are not always the best shows. They're just the best marketed shows. So I don't know. I could, I could, I could talk a lot about this. Yeah, a lot of the new indie shows are the ones I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... It is. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. Ooh, don't compare your middle to someone else's end. Yes. Yes. We are all, we are all on different, yeah, we are all running different races. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Your show's three years old on Tuesday. Happy show birthday. So this has been on my mind lately. Yes. Jocelyn said, or Jolson says, Sarah, you seem to have your hand in so many proverbial pies. How do you find a way to balance your focus? I find working on my next project, planning blog posts and actively tweeting insanely hard to bal balance my focus and time on. Me too. Oh, absolutely. Me too. I don't think there's a magic bullet. I think there's just... So the, the way that I do this is... I started by overworking and overwhelming myself and that led to a lot of burnout. Um, and then I've learned since then um, to very strategically say no to things. Um, I was invited just today, I was invited to host PodFest again for the audio drama contingent like I did last year. And I had to say, no, I'm sorry. I am so crazy busy. I can't. And sometimes saying no looks like closing down one of your many social media platforms, maybe one that's not performing. Um, and balancing your focus also means knowing what is a good idea to say yes to. So like for these live streams, like I don't make money from them or anything, but this is part of my mission. Like this is part of why I create in the first place. It's to connect with and help other creators. And so this is a yes for me. Um, other things are yeses for me because like, oh, this makes money. And so like, that's going to be a yes because, you know, I need to make money to live and like buy food. <laughs> um, I know that that's not incredibly helpful, but actually if you're subscribed to my newsletter, it's called Dear Creators. My newsletter that's coming out this Monday, which I think is the 18th, um, my newsletter coming out Monday talks a little bit about, um, what I'm choosing to focus on in 2021 and how I made that decision. Um, so you might find that helpful as well. So, because I feel like this is like something I could also talk about three hours for. Jimmy says, why not ask for myself? Because I hate the newsletters that are beggy and silly, which is so many of them. Mm. Jimmy says, I never want to be one of those, even if it means I never have a big ask in mind. I feel like there's some like self-worth, and, and self identity stuff going on there. Um, I kind of want to talk more about that at some points. Um, it's, it's kind of expected that when you provide value, you know, you get to ask for something in return and it, that's called your call to action. Um, and your, your newsletter should have a call to action. And actually, Jimmy, your newsletter does have a call to action but I don't know if it's intentional or not. 
So in your in your Thursday newsletter at the very bottom, it always says, hey, is this helpful or not? Can you give me feedback? That's your call to action that you're asking people to do. And whether that's what you want to ask people to do or if you want to change that. Um, but that's that's currently the call to action that I've seen in your newsletter. OK, boy, I am just I'm talking. I'm doing all the talking. Got catch up. Okay, sorry, I'm like scrolling back through the comments. So Takara, there is no good or bad when it comes to followers. So Takara says, I started my author page last February. I had 555 followers. Is that good or bad? I think it's good. I think that's a lot of people. But what does a lot of people mean? And if you start chasing that question back, um, I, I think there's a better a better question that you could ask that can more that can help you more quantify the value of the people following your page would be, are the people following my page engaging with me and taking the actions that I'm asking them to take? So, you know, I could have an Instagram account with 40 million followers. And if like, if it doesn't accomplish anything, then it's just a vanity metric and it's not really worth anything. So like, I would say instead of, is this number good or bad? Is it, are these people actually reading my mystery? Like, are these people reading my work? Are they commenting on it? Are they taking the action that I want them to take? Um, yes. <laughs> Augie is carpet bombing the chat with big brain energy. I love it. I love it. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Augie says, I'm just reiterating all the cool things Sarah talks about. She's been in my ears every day for a month straight. Yes. I'm doing podcasts now, coming here and listening to old right now episodes. Wow. Wow. Don't overdose on me. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. I feel like we're working through a lot of stuff tonight. I feel like this is good. Not feeling like you have enough for a newsletter. I totally understand that. And yes. Oh gosh. Yes. Yes. You have, you're so young and you've got so far to go, Allie. Yeah. Um, I didn't start podcasting until I was in my thirties. I'm just now getting started. And so I like, I look at people who are in their twenties and I'm like, Oh, I wish I could have started podcasting like 20 years ago. But, you know, you got to do what you can with what you have right now. So, yes, Jimmy. Yes, sending you hearts. Dimitri says, law of reciprocity, offering is not begging. Yes, 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 yes. You started when you were in high school. Oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. Yeah. Um, even older, I feel so far behind. Yeah, I'm even older. And we're not behind. It's it's the same thing we were just talking about. It's it's comparison and it's our individual journeys. There are people, who is it, Grandma Moses that didn't start painting until she was like 80. Ian McEwen didn't start publishing these novels until he was older, I think in his 60s. Like, there's so many brilliant creators that started a little bit later. There's nothing wrong with that. You cannot compare your journey to somebody else's. You cannot. And the reason I say you cannot is because you will drive yourself crazy with it and you will put yourself into a place of resistance and you will stop creating. You will get into your own head. You can't, you can't focus on that. There's a wonderful saying that, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, but the next best time to plant a tree is now. Right now. You start when you can. Uh, Jimmy, can you provide people with a link to your newsletter? Um, yes, 
Yes. Um, another book lover says I'm 36 for a couple more months and I have a couple finished drafted novels, but I haven't polished them for publication and I've wanted to be a writer since third grade. Another book lover, you and I are on very similar paths. We're on very, very similar paths. Um, I think I'm 37. I don't know how old I am. Um, I don't even have any finished drafted novels. I have a whole bunch of started novels. Girl in Space is the first thing that I've ever finished in my entire life. And it's not even finished. I just have season one finished. Um, absolutely. Oh, Jimmy, I love this. Jimmy says, I am 52. My first book comes out this month. Did I mention that? Anyhow, 52. I'm just getting cranked up. Y'all young folks need to step up and don't let the old man whoop you. <laughs> Jimmy is 52 and just getting started. Mm, I love it, Jimmy. Yes, listen to the Jimmy. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm like going through the chat now and like everybody's sharing their experience and um, Yes. Okay. And I'm going to have Jimmy's newsletter here, tinyletter.com slash Jimmy writes. And that's Jimmy with an I E. Um, oh, I do too. I have to do math too. <laughs> I'm like, okay, wait, it's, it's 2021. I got minus the, the year I was born. <laughs> and I'm always surprised. I'm like, really? That's how old I am. Um, so for what that's worth, I totally understand. <laughs> oh, yeah, Davis says I'm 25. I think I'm going to have a lot of time to finish the projects I have after I find stability. My past year has been difficult. Yep. Yeah, I um like I spent the first 10 years of my career like working at like software companies and not doing what I wanted to do creatively. And I've talked about this on the Right Now podcast before, but like there was like a whole decade where I didn't write and I was really unhappy. And so, yeah, for what that's worth. Dimitri says, I'm 54 and I never felt more excited about my journey. My first book of art, not writing comes out this year. That is exciting, Dimitri. Hey, when, you're, when your book comes out, um, let us know and, and give us a link to it so we can all buy it. Jimmy, you too. And anyone else coming out with a book? <laughs> I like this. I like this. Tim, you don't need to obsess about those numbers. You don't need to obsess about the numbers. Just know that you have a good show. <laughs> yes, Dimitri, outstanding. Yes. Yeah. Good. Augie says this age talk is also encouraging. I'm near 30 with every breath I breathe, and I just feel it in my bones. Oh, I'm near 30 with every breath I breathe, and I just feel it in my bones. I don't know. I liked my early 30s. They were really good and fun. And yeah, they were they were great. I, I made the most um, the most life changes, the most advancements. Um, I stopped caring what people thought about me, which was very freeing. Um, so, yeah. Allie says, I hope I can do podcasting full time. It's something I'm incredibly passionate about. And for the first time, I feel like I'm genuinely good at something. I know my stuff and I'm still learning. Yes, that is a great attitude to have. Like, I know my stuff and I'm still learning. Like, I'm still learning. I'm still figuring out stuff. Like, yes. J. Michael DeAngelis says, I was published twice in quick succession when I was 29 or 30, and then not much else happened for all of my 30s until I dove into audio drama a decade later at 39. Yeah, things take time and they happen when they're supposed to happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, gosh, there is, I'm just full of sayings tonight, but there's another, there was another saying I think it was about Weird Al. And I think I got this from Christopher Reynaga, the creator of Point Mystic, which is a wonderful indie audio drama that you should listen to, Point Mystic. Um, but we were talking about restarting your career. And he made the point that like every time Weird Al Yankovic came out with a new album, he was relaunching his career. And so your career is going to like stop and start and start and stop and like do all sorts of funky things over the years. And you just have to be along for the ride. 
you may decide that you want to be an opera singer when you're 60. I mean, you know, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, Anne says, I think we're all learning and growing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. That's it. Thank you. Every Weird Al album is a comeback album. I love that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Every Weird Al album is a comeback album. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two hour mark has been and gone. <laughs> yeah. And actually, yeah, I should, I should probably run away soon, but this has just been such a really, really beautiful conversation tonight. And I'm so glad that you're all here. I'm glad that my, you know, knock on wood that my internet uh, has held up. Um, are you okay with having old man energy? You can have young man energy. It's just whatever energy you want to project. <laughs> uh Oh, two and a half. Uh Oh, You've heard of two hour mark. Get ready for two and a half hour mark. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I had to like take one last glance here at the comments. Um, more evil. Oh, two hour marks, evil twin brother, more evil. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Davis is on your, t okay, sorry, I could talk about this forever. Okay. Ooh, okay, Pinball Princess, one thing, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna run away. But Pinball Princess says, the millennial Gen Z terror of hitting 25 without having done something significant is real and infectious. And figuring out how to unlearn that is a mite difficult. Um, yes. Yeah. You know what gets me is like, when I watch the Olympics, and I'm like, that person is 16. Or, um, yeah, and anything now. Like, there's just people significantly younger <laughs> than me everywhere. But, like, no. No. And I know, I know. Figuring out how to unlearn it. Like, it is you, it is something you have to unlearn. Like, you're, you're not going to be, like, a prodigy, you know, by the time you're this or this or this. Um, ooh, yeah. Yes. Davis says, I'm so used to hearing about people my age making it into Forbes. Yeah, that whole, yeah, that whole like 30 under 30 and the 25 under 25. I don't want to say anything mean, but like, I never want to have peaked when I was young. Like I always want the peak of the mountain to be in my future. Like I never want to think that my, my coolest and best accomplishment is behind me in my early twenties, right? Because we're all learning and growing all the time. We all have plenty of time. We have a whole lifetime to be and create. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Don't let that 30 under 30 bother you. Don't let the 25 under 25 bother you. All we have to do is stay in our lane and focus on the project that's in front of us, the project that we've chosen. And if you don't like the project that you've chosen, you can start a different project. Like it's just that magical. All right. My wonderful, wonderful creators. Sarah's going to go fall down. Um, it looks like Cassandra's going to play some Stardew Valley. I'm going to go play some Stardew Valley on my phone with my headphones in. It's kind of a, take a, bit of a break, but you are all absolutely wonderful and so glad you're here um we do if this is your first time welcome i don't think i welcomed you today um if this is your first time at one of our write alongs or create alongs welcome uh we do these every wednesday and friday evening at 7 p.m central apparently even during a blizzard um yeah so that starts at 5 p.m pacific that starts at 6 p.m Nope, 8 p.m. Eastern. A little bit of math there is difficult. Um, yeah, 
So come join us. Uh, they're here on Facebook. They're here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Sarah Ray Warner. I've also been streaming games. Uh, I stream Stardew Valley just for fun. I'm not, it's not for any reason. It's just because I like streaming Stardew Valley. And I've been doing that on Thursdays, but I don't know if that's like a permanent thing. Um, yes. Oh my gosh. Anna's getting up at 530 in the morning. Go to bed. Oh my gosh. All of you, all of you go to sleep. Take good care of yourselves. Or if it's earlier where you are, uh, get some good writing done. Get some resting done if you need to. Please know that you are completely valid no matter how old you are, no matter what lane you're running in, no matter what you're creating or what you feel like you've accomplished. You matter. You are awesome. Okay? All right. Remember that. You're all fantastic. I'm going to go away now. But I will see you next week.